Hi everybody and welcome to another Bypen Pen and Paper Streams. I'm fumbling about and we are about to dive into Runaway once again and get we've covered the first five well first four chapters actually. This is the fifth. Gifts from the Crypt. What can I tell you? Getting over the loss of Gina was really hard. Only one thing kept me going. My strong determination to unravel the whole mystery surrounding the crucifix, which ended up being the key to a sacred crypt. I wasn't too concerned about having to get through that old mine, since I've always loved spelunking, but I wasn't aware of the unpleasant surprise waiting for me in one of the chambers. Dang! I see some light over there. Although, according to the map, that's not the exit leading to the Hopi village. Well, I'll take a look anyway. Maybe I can get to the village somehow from outside of the mine. Plus, I'm tired of wearing this darn flashlight on my head. Man, finally! I couldn't wait to take that off! Hey! Wow. What is this? Oh no! I can't stand those disgusting beasts! Ah! Bats! No! Bats! No! Help! Almost ran off. I think that's the Hopi village down there. Eureka! I finally found it! It's not gonna be easy to climb down there. The mountain is really steep. The fall would kill me. Okay, Brad, let's right take a look. The cliff. It's right at I'm pretty sure the Hopi village cave is down just a few yards more. Yeah, jump. Why don't you? No thanks. <laughs> okay, that is an option. No thanks. It's too heavy for me to move. Can't move the rock. Rock, rock, rock. Can't move the rock. No piece of wood. It must have been a beam used to hold up the mine shaft. Okay. Wow. Wood you is just... in pretty good shape. I might be able to use it. Okay, I wasn't expecting him to just put that in his fucking pants. Look what was hidden under the wood. It must be some kind of mining tool. But the handle's missing. All right. Get the mining tool. It might be useful to me if I find a handle to put on it. Yeah, why not? Oh yeah, we're gonna be doing some pixel hunting here. This is just gonna be jeez, no. Uh, when I was mentioning pixel hunting before, and when I raged out uh, on the um, bloody rock that I couldn't pick up in the previous episode. I didn't even notice it when I came running out of the mine. Yeah. No doubt it's one of James Douglas's miners. Killed at the hands of the Hopi. Hmm. That's the bone. I don't like the idea. It's like grave robbing, but I don't have a choice. A bone might be just what I need. Try to pick a bone with you. Like a little part broken off. I think it's just what I'm looking for. Oh, I know what to combine it for, I think. Nah, Take more I don't bones. need any more bones. But th there is one specific thing here in this beam. Like, this is all just like beam, 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 beam. Look at the entrance, blah, blah. You, from this beam, you need one very small pixel hunting item, and that's a fucking nail. It's not nailed in very well. There's a piece sticking out of the wood. No way I can do that with my fingers alone. So, yeah, there is also a board. Surely this is the work of the Hopi. Not necessary. I can tell just by looking at them that they're etchings, not paintings. I can only hope that the stream is going well. That's the only thing I can do. I hate those filthy bats more than any other creature in the world. No way! With those revolting wind rats in here. there. There's no way I'm going back in. Okay, let's start combining. It'll be very useful if I can put a handle on it. Ooh, we got a handle it's on handy it. that a little bit is missing at one end. Yeah, I think the femur could make a stupendous handle. Cool. It stays on nice and tight. But it'd be impossible to cut the wood with that. I don't want to risk destroying it. Oh, nothing. Even though I remember part of the way, I 
think I might need the map to get back again. Yeah, this is kind of convoluted. Okay. Well, I don't know what to do with this. Okay. I'll take out the nail. Schlick. It's pretty long, is... but it might come in handy. Schlick and very easy. Let's nail it down to the rock, I think, so we can... That doesn't it. make sense. I don't like... Well, what? You won't get anywhere. Do... That doesn't... Hmm... I don't know. You won't get any... That doesn't see... That doesn't make sense. I'll have to use it again to get back through the mine. Well... We have to. That doesn't seem... No, those revolting winged rats in the. Oh, that, uh, what do you miss? The drawings. The entrance, nail. I'm pretty sure. Nice waterfall. Hmm. I don't really know. I don't think. I don't like. All right. Ah, nail it yeah. into some hard ground yeah. so it'll hold tight. Not, not nail into the rock, nail it into some hard ground. Ready. I think it'll hold up. I don't like. I don't see any. Where's the nail? Hmm, yeah, by tying the rope there, I could slide down to the Hopi village, but that rock doesn't look very safe. I don't think it'll hold my body weight. There is the goddamn nail! There it is. Come on. Pixel fucking hunting. The rope has to be well attached to the nail. Ready. And now we and can now, go. now, let's do some rock climbing. No problem. I was quite the climber at summer camp. Please don't fall on your ass. Ooh, well, look at Gina, there. Hi. She's alive. I can't believe it. You're alive. How did you get here? Long story. When I fell down that hole, I hit my head and passed out. I don't know how much time passed before I woke up. When I came yeah. to, it was totally dark. My leg was throbbing. I dragged myself on hands and knees through the mine shaft, trying to find a way out. Finally, when I thought it was a far to think, I reached the shaft with light. I could see the sunlight at the end of the tunnel, so I got a second wind and forced myself toward it. I came out of the mine shaft. The first thing I found was that huge statue back there, and I was scared stiff. But I regained my composure and passed through all those weird ruins until coming here. I couldn't believe I was stuck in the middle of a rocky canyon with a broken leg. In all truth, I thought my life was over. And that's right where you showed up. Oh, Blaine, I've never been so happy to see someone. But tell me, how did you manage to find me? Well, actually, I came across you by accident. After you fell down that terrible hole, I gave you up for dead. But I swore to solve the mystery of the crucifix. That's what brought me here. These ruins are from a Hopi village. And on the other side of this canyon must be the sacred crypt of the Hopi. The crucifix is actually a key that lets you into the crypt. That's dumb. How did you figure all this out? I'll give you the full story later. For now, let's get you out of here and have that leg fixed up. No, no, wait. I'm sure it was really hard for you to get here. Come on, let's not just leave without unraveling the mystery of the crucifix. I can hold out a bit longer. Don't worry. Please, go to that crypt. But you need to see a doctor, and that's more important. No, please, Brian. I owe it to my father. Do it for me. Well, okay. Have it your way. You just rest and don't move. Save your energy for when we leave. Okay, Brian. Don't worry about me.
I don't like the look of Gina's leg. I didn't want to frighten her, but she seems like it's broken to me. I'll have to find a way to put a splint on her leg if I want to get her out of here. Okay, I think it'd be best to find that Hopi clip first. Afterwards, I'll take care of Gina's leg. She knows she has a broken leg. She told you that. Jesus, man. She's willing to eat. I better get her out of here as quickly as possible. No, better let her rest for now and save her energy for the trip back. Let's see the camera. Let's actually see what it's huge. Is. Definitely made of stone. From up close, that statue looks even more amazing. That face is really intimidating. Now I know how the earliest miners of Douglasville must have felt when they saw this. must be some type of Hopi symbol, even though it's in the shape of a cross, it's probably not like a church cross. No, it's obviously not any kind of spring or mechanism, and this may sound a bit superstitious, but I don't like the idea of disrespecting the religious symbols of other cultures. Good guy, Brian. Goody, goody guy, Brian. It's a tomahawk. Ooh, nice. Yeah, Take it. a tomahawk could come in handy. Well, this is no simple axe. It can also be used as a pipe. Nice, nice. We can smoke. Ugh, I get the shivers every time I stare into that thing. It's completely solid. There's no door or anything like that. Let's tomahawk the statue. Wow, okay, that's I don't see any reason for doing it. No. Okay, okay, well, what do you need to come yep. up? Good idea. By dividing the wood into two pieces, I'll have two boards to use as a splint on Gina's leg. You just Ready. need some more. I think they're just the right size. Which should be able to get, maybe? I can't leave without. It leads to one of the mine shafts. Looks similar to the one. I no, it's obvious. And okay, good thing we went here. I wonder if I can just cut that rope. Hmm. No, I would only be able to cut a short piece of rope from here. I couldn't use it as a splint for Gina's leg. Luckily. It was long enough for me to lower myself down here. No, I don't want to go back up. Besides, I can never take Gina with me that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. Can we do that? Can we do this? Let's figure out what we have on this side. I feel like the game is running poorly for whatever damn reason. Because of my fixing up things. This door here, door there, so I'll just check this part out. Okay. Is this gonna be a puzzle? Do I remember this being a puzzle? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's see where we were gonna end up. Yep, of course. Come on. Do it faster. Faster, better, stronger. So, yeah. I mean, it's not much of a puzzle if there's not too many doors. Probably. So, door number 3 or 1. I will count it. Okay, so we need a power. There, I think the only way he can go is here. Teleportation magic and all that bullshit. Oh, yeah, that's how we gotta do it. Yes, from here, 
I could cut the rope pretty far up and get a long enough piece to use as a splint for Gina's leg. Here we go. I'll cut up as high as possible. Ta-da! I think it just got a bit higher, but never mind. Now we have to watch him walk about all the way. Oh, no, stop. He's gonna do all of the run. I don't have to do anything. He's playing the game by himself. Let's grab the piece of rope I cut off. With this bit, I'll have enough to make a splint for Gina's leg. That doesn't seem like... Okay. Good. The pieces of wood and the rope can be used to make a makeshift splint, but I think it would be better to do that right before we leave. And first, I have to go into the sacred crypt and find out what's hidden in there. Oh, you're not gonna... Just help her out right now? Okay. Fair enough, Brad. Great. Let's look around and see if I can get a handle on this. Boy, oh, this is close to Yeah. I bet the sacred crypt is up on the cliff up there. Man, it's not gonna be an easy walk. I can't stand those rickety old suspension bridges. Well, I can't turn back now, so off we go. <laughs> Brian is running all over. <laughs> How the uh -huh. heck did you find this? This must be the entrance to the crypt. And that weird monolith over there must be some kind of door. Um, do I don't know it? what sort of plant that is, but Eat the it. stem has pods growing on it like green beans. No, there's really no call for that. Yeah, we're gonna need to return for those green beans sometimes in the future because that's gonna be annoying. Suppose it's some sort of Hopi deity. It's like that uh, cat coin Chinese thing. No, opening the entrance is to the crypt means? won't be accomplished that way. Yeah, yeah, I know how to accomplish that. Yeah, that must be the mouth. way to open the entrance to the sacred crypt. Bad news. The keyhole in the mouth of the monolith is jammed up with sand, and the key won't go in. Oh man, I yeah. thought this was all turning out too easy. Yeah, yeah, I thought this was turning out too easy as well. Sand. It just won't fit, so I'll have to clean out the sand some other way. Hmm, do we have something? No, that won't clean. Look, let's put something else. Let's try this. No, that. Math? No. Oh no, I, I know what. It's gonna work. No. Nah. No, that. That won't work. Try everything with everything. No. I don't know what sort of step. Oh, now okay. we can get the bench. It may be just what I need. A couple of those pods are hanging from the branch. Let's branch out the place. That doesn't seem like a... Yeah, I think it could be used to clean out that sand. Ready. Now I think I can insert the key. Absolutely pointless puzzle. Just keep well, adding. Well, I hope the key will go in now. Click, click. Great! Monolith is moving! I did it! The time has come to uncover the hidden mystery behind all this. Yes, let us discover the hidden mystery. There's a stone passageway leading downward. I just keep wondering what I might find in there. Oh, the you're never gonna believe it. I'm a bit nervous. Anyway, here we go. Hello, my young friend. I see that you have taken the wise path and managed to reach this place. Hey! I knew you would be able to. Wapuchum? Is that you? Yes, I am Wapuchum, the last of the Hopi chiefs. Do not fear. Come closer. 
But what are you doing here? I don't get it. There is nothing to get. Listen, you do not know it. But this is what you have come in search of. But that... I know what it is. The man who put it here brought dishonor to his Hopi blood by hiding it in this sacred place. It is up to you to remove it and distance this rotten seed from our pure land. Who does it belong to? I am not the one to answer this question. You must ask the one who brought shame to his race by hiding it here. That person's dead. So? What do you mean, so? I can't ask a dead person. I assure you that you can. But how? You must find the path. I know that you will be able to. Now you must leave. But first, leave the sacred Hopi key here. This sacred place must never again be desecrated. Okay, I understand. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Fukujim. Will we ever meet again? Someday, my young friend. Goodbye, and may Okiwak's light shine on your path. Same to you, Wapuchim. Goodbye! I think he lies. I don't think he shows up anywhere ever again. I think. Whoa! I thought I was gonna decipher the mystery. But far from it. I found an even greater one. It crossed half the country for a bottle with a finger inside. It is a real human finger. I'm sure of it. Bottles in formaldehyde to preserve it properly. But who in the world does this finger belong to that it would be so important? And there would be so many people willing to kill to get it. And as for finding Wupuchim inside there, I'd rather not even talk about it. This is all nuts! Anyway, I'll eventually think of a plan after we get Gina back and get her leg fixed up. The finger of power! The finger of middle fingering. I'm afraid we're worse off than before. Finger of fingering. Oh boy, you are in such a mystery. Can I go anywhere else? I don't think so. Sanctuary, blah blah blah. Nice looking place. Hopi village. Hopi Hopa. Let me just use the rope to tie the pieces of wood on tight. That'll make a good splint. Let's see. Gina, try not to move. I'm gonna put a splint on your leg. Ow! Okay, I think it'll work. Gina, it's time to go. We've got to get through the mine. But don't worry, I'll help you. And... Yeah? But tell me, what happened in that crypt? Did you get inside? Yeah, I went in and... Well, what did you find inside? Tell me! Well, it was... It was all really weird. I'll tell you on the way. But... Give it a rest. We have a long walk ahead through the mine. We'll have to stop more than once for rest, so I'll have plenty of time to give you a thorough report. Come on, let's go. I think I know of someone who can fix up your leg. You're doing great. Put your arm around my shoulder. Only now I notice the animation can be very, very... So Oscar, my friend Gina has an injured leg. Mama Dorita can cure her, right? Of course. Come on, get in here. That was easy. Would you believe? Gina was alive! I was flabbergasted to find her after thinking I'd lost her forever. <laughs> As for the mystery we were trying to solve, we were almost worse off than in the beginning. All we had was a human finger and a bottle of formaldehyde, and that was an even greater mystery than the crucifix itself. Thank goodness I could count on Mama Dorita's help, which was more than just fixing up Gina's leg. The Indian, the nun, and now the I finger. Now your leg while the monster blast that I placed on her face is wet, and she'll be just like new in a short while. In the meantime, your little girlfriend had better stay here and not move a step. Thank you so much, Mama Dorita. You are so kind, ma'am. Say nada. You say your name was Brian, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Brian. Brian Vasco. Muy bien, Brian. Something tells me you are also in need of my help. What can I do for you? And please, stop calling me ma'am. Well, ma'am, I, I mean this. 
Uh, let's see. How did Oscar start working? How did Oscar start working for you? Well, I can't tell you anything about Oscar's past life. That is his own business, and it is up to him to speak a lot of his illusions. What I can tell you is that his life had gone astray when I made him. He was like a boy lost in the woods, with no idea where to turn. I did what I could to help him because I immediately sensed a pure soul trapped inside that strong, huge body. He is very grateful to me, and that is why he insists on remaining by my side. I have told him time and again to get on with his life and forget about me. But he says his only mission in life is to stick by me and serve me in every possible way. I'd like to see Gina. Go ahead, you know where to find her. Gina! Brian, hi! Hey, you shouldn't move that leg too much. Mama Dorita says you'll heal in no time, as long as you rest. I'm just a bit nervous. The concoction that woman put in my leg is really making me itch. Plus, I can't stop thinking about what she told me inside the mine as we were coming here. Especially the part about the human finger in the bottle of formaldehyde. My God, Brian, what are we going to do now? Well, I've been giving it some thought, and all I can think of is one thing. What do you suppose? Look. I can't stop thinking about something that Indian chief told me. That walking something guy? Wukuchin, yeah. I asked him what that bottle with the finger meant, and he said that the man who took it there should answer that question. I told him, that guy is dead. But Wukuchin said that wasn't necessarily an obstacle. You mean we should talk with... Yes, with your father. I know it'll be hard for you, but I don't see any other way out. I understand. Don't worry about it, but do you really think we can speak with a dead person? Just a few days ago, I would have answered you with a resounding no. But now, after all the things that have happened to me, and what I've seen since we met, I don't know. I think almost anything is possible. Besides, what harm can it do to try? I guess none. <laughs> what have we got to lose? But how in the world will we do it? With the help of Mama Dorita. She's knowledgeable about these things. However, there's one thing that concerns me. Wupuchin said that the person who hid the bottle in the sacred crypt had Hopi blood, so it couldn't have been your father. Oh, yeah. No, of course not. It couldn't be him. Well, I suppose there are more people mixed up in this strange story. Yeah, I guess that's it. Anyway, your dad has to be able to explain everything. I'm sure he can. So, when should we do it? First, I have to talk to Mama Dorita. Okay. Well, keep me informed, please. Well, he speaks a lot, I can snack a lot. <laughs> but, yeah. All of the paraphernalia in this house, totally, she's totally a voodoo woman, totally gonna be into all of that, speaking with that thing. How are you feeling? Better and better. I must admit, Mama Dorita knows what she's doing. I'm gonna talk with Mama Dorita. Alright, please, come tell me if anything new happens. Don't worry, I will. See you soon. See you. I don't think I can get anything from this room, it's just to meet Gina. She should stop uh, uh, idle idol animating. And, you know, so she doesn't break the leg. Oh, now I notice my camera is actually cutting off questions. Sorry guys. I didn't think that through. But I... Do you mean speak with the spirit of a dead person? Very well, I can help you with that. However, you must know that in addition to myself, I will need a medium while I perform the call to the other side. Furthermore, experience tells me that it is of the utmost importance for the success of the seance that a person with close emotional ties to the spirit remain present. To spice things up a bit, if you catch my drift, of course, you must keep in mind that you may wish to communicate with the unleading, but the unleading may not wish to communicate with you. As for the person with close emotional ties to the spirit, there's no problem. That person is Gina. Very well then, that problem is solved. All we have to take care of is the topic of the medium. Why do we need a medium? Look, spirits are intangible entities. 
and as such, they cannot produce any sound whatsoever unless they enter into the body of a living person and use it in order to speak. That is what mediums are for. They are referred to as horses in southern culture. Where can I find a medium around here? I used to work with a woman from Nakozari, a town south of the Mexican border. She was an excellent medium, but one day we experienced a bit of a rough spell, and she swore never to work as a medium again. Besides the woman from Nakozari, I don't know of anyone else around here. I like the chicken. The other chicken looks very confused and scared there. What about using Oscar as a medium? Impossible! Oscar is a marvelous person, but he is in no way prepared to act as a medium. I think I could be a medium. You? I think not. Come closer and look into my eyes. No, you cannot. Your eyes reveal that you are unprepared to lower your level of consciousness enough to fall into a trance. Okay, I see what you mean. I am delighted. I'd like to go ahead. Let's see if I can talk to Gina about the plans. Maybe. Hi, Gina. Brian, have you spoken with Mama Dorita about the plan? Yes, she'll help us. I just need to find a medium so that we can perform the seance. I'm out of here. I hate having to stay here without moving and without helping you. You just have to think about healing as fast as you can. See you later. Be careful. Uh, it's, a, it's okay. You, you will be able to help me at, in the third game. <laughs> For sure. Oscar! What? Mm. What did you Well, I don't like to think about my past. All I can tell you is that I'm not real proud of some of the things I did. Luckily, Mama Dorita came into my life like a shining light and gave it all new meaning. Now my only mission is to serve Mama Dorita. Oh, okay. It's old. I don't think I'll... Technically, I think I'm done with this city for now. I need to go... This really improves the ambiance. After all, and any self... Oscar's yes. a great design. By the look of that bucket, I think... No, Jump down even below. less so. Okay, yeah, I think I'm done with this city. I need to go back in town. So I can talk to new people. Hmm. What the heck? I can't believe it. All of Joshua's stuff has disappeared. I'm not even going to try to understand what happened. This place is really starting to freak me out. I'm out of here. And don't try to stay as far away as possible. That deletes one area. No, I don't think it would do me any good to return there, and I wouldn't even think of going through that mine again. Hmm. Second area. Let's go back to that one. Yeah, the game is bugging out for some reason. Like some visual issues crapping out. Maybe because I'm starting with incompatibility mode. Maybe. Ryan, so you made it to the Hopi Village, did you? Come on, get us here right away and tell me how you did it. Okay, I'm coming. Nice. Nice setup. How did you find out? News gets around fast. And I also know you didn't come back from the Hopi Village alone. You didn't tell me about the girl. You see, I thought she was dead. And I didn't feel like talking about it. Oh. I think there are lots of things you'd rather not talk to me about. Don't you think it's time you told me the truth about how you got here? Well, alright. But I'm warning you, it's a crazy story. Oh, don't worry. All the better. Here goes. Is that Mama Dorita's house letting her leg heal? Well, I try to figure out the meaning of a bottle of formaldehyde with the human finger floating inside. That's all. 
You didn't believe a word I said, did you? No, you're wrong. I know when someone lies to me, and you weren't lying. Plus, Brian, <laughs> I kind of like you. You can count on me to give you a hand with whatever you need. That's great, Sushi. Thanks. You can see Sushi's a big music lover. As a listener, I'm playing her own stuff. Let's see. A scanner, a printer, a laptop, a digital clock, and a plant. A cactus, to be precise. Nope, don't need any of that. I think I saw it in a science fiction movie. Some classic in black and white. What would I gain by moving it around? An electric guitar, pedals, and an amplifier. I'd love to, but I can't play a note. However, with the piano, I have done a thing or two. I think we can't get anything here. Like no items. I don't know what each of these things does. But that thing over there looks like a ham radio with some kind of radar for scanning incoming signals. No, I don't want to mess anything up. It's not lit. What for? It's not at all cold. I'd say they're pro This is no simple operation Sushi's got set up here. No, I don't want to mess anything up. I've noticed it moves from time to time. I guess it's aiming at different geostationary satellites. No, if I move it, I might change its orientation towards the satellite. Sushi, I'm sorry for disturbing you. No problem. I see you're working on the computer, but what exactly are you doing? I'm a computer expert and, well, let's just say I'm especially interested in everything involving the internet. Oh, you mean you spend all day surfing the net? Oh no, I assure you I do much more than just surf the net. Do you remember that scandal in the government a few months ago? Because a hacker broke into the system and showed it was not invincible? Yeah, of course I remember. That was big news. Didn't the hacker leave behind a signature, like Jane something? Janie Guitar. Yeah, that's it. Hey, so it was you. Are you a hacker? I sure am. And to be honest, I think I'm the best of all. Unbelievable. Actually, despite the pseudonym, I always thought Janie Guitar was a man. Typical chauvinistic attitude. Well, you should know that there are many females among the most famous hackers in the world. Have you heard of the A-Team? Of course, those guys have created some major trouble. Those guys? No. They are two sisters, Alba and Erin, and they're very good friends of mine. Those gals are hot stuff, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Hot stuff. You think I should have gone to Berkeley instead of getting mixed up in this? The question is, is that what you think? I don't think so. You know you couldn't leave this half solved. If you had, you would have spent the rest of your life wondering what would have happened if you'd stuck to it. Anyway, Sushi, we'll talk later. All right, see you later. I'm just gonna have to come back, come back a few times to you know, complete to get some info. I honestly, I maybe I mentioned this before. My memory is trash, but I also think this is the least I have in terms of. Remembering what I need to do with puzzles and all that. The poker's made of iron and looks pretty strong. Like all of the other things, yeah. I kind of remember. It's been covered with ash and soot by the fire, but it's not in bad shape. I kind of forget. They aren't things. real. They aren't real. Those decorative rifles aren't going to help me much. I wonder why Sushi has lit the fire at this time of year. Nah, it's not cold. Just the opposite. Let's poke around if I can. Why do that? The fire... Okie dokie, and... Pixel hunting... I think we should get the key to the... As <sighs> usual, a bell and a check-in book. Yeah, I think we no, should get the key the to right the cell phone. Look where it's supposed to be. Just a bunch of names and signatures. What would I want that for? Besides, I think Sushi left it out here for decoration. 
Come on over to me here. Nothing here. Okay, maybe it didn't here. No. Let's check out. I need to get into that block. Safe anyway. Check up on the other guys. Hey, that guy over there must be Rector. Hello, Rector, right? Yeah. And you're Brian, I bet. Saturn told me about you. By the way, that helmet you gave me is way cool. You wouldn't happen to have another one for me, would ya? No, sorry. I only have that one. Well, if you ever come across another one, keep Mr. Rutger in mind. Sure thing. Awesome, man. Yo, man. Yo, man, man. Man, man, yo. <laughs> oh my god, that's so weird. <laughs> ah. Oof, culturally insensitive. Never mind. Hey, that music you were playing sounded really neat. You thought it was cool? Playing the bongos totally mellows me out. Bongos. It's my hobby, you know. The greenhouse you've set up here is really something. Thanks, man. Plants are my life. That is the truth. I've mostly got African spices in here. You know why? Because Africa is the mother of life. I was thinking, you wouldn't happen to know of a plant or something like that that would help a person go into a trance, would you? To enter a trance? You mean to trip out, right? I have some knowledge in that area. Do you think you could prepare me some of that? I could, but look, I don't know if you're aware of how things work around here. Oh yeah, I should give you something in exchange. That's it, right? You got it. And what might that something be? Mm, I don't know. I don't really need anything. Something I might like, you know. Could you tell me exactly what the Rastafarian beliefs consist of? No. <laughs> Okay, that's for sure. <laughs> no. I'll just go away. on my way, Wrecker. See ya. See ya. Okay, he has need of nothing for now. Needed by all big plants. Now, I'm not saying I don't, man. I can't waste any time watering them. Every time I look at it, I think it might start dancing and singing at any moment. Every time I look at it, forget that. I'd rather pet the head of a rabbit. Okay, this nice little tree. Mm -mm. Better leave it where it is. I wouldn't be able to give it the love it deserves right now. Look for something useful in the garden. I don't see anything useful. Okay, can I? That doesn't seem like a very... No, they don't have anything else I can do with it. You won't get any... It indubitably looks like an artichoke! No way! It's... Let's see what the guy upstairs is doing. I forgot his name. I haven't played this in a while. Oh. Well, the aliens. Apparently. Hi, Saturn. Maybe a bit extravagant, but I like this guy. Hello, Saturn. How's it going with the idea blasting helmet? Hello, BB. The helmet is excellent. Amazing. The only problem is the great Vesequa. The what? The statue I had hanging on the crane. It's disappeared. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, no, would you? No, no, no. no not a clue. <laughs> so why, don't you think? Yeah. Well, I hope it's just one of Rutger's little practical jokes. Though he assured me he knows nothing. Don't worry. I'm sure it'll turn up. I hope so. Mm-hmm. I see you're working on a stone sculpture right now. Yes, I can't tell you exactly what it is that I'm sculpting, but I've been struck with great inspiration. Mm-hmm. Alien inspiration. Now that you've got your inspiration back, did you return the helmet to me? Return the idea-forming helmet? Not a chance. A deal is a deal. Well, we'll discuss that later, Saturn. See you soon. Ciao. Okay, this is a question of stuckage. 
We talked to pretty much everybody, and there is nobody else inside. Yeah, I see some falling apart in terms of <coughs> screen tearing and all that. An old, a couple of pages and an old. Uh, I'm not interested. I'm skipping through all this because we already heard all that. Oh wait, no, did they go inside already? Oh, it went outside. Which is why it's odd that the thing thinks so bad. Ew. It stinks like this place. Okay, let's take one more peek to see what I can find. No, no, I got the key from the... Some medical equipment, but for now I don't see anything I can use. No! I said, uh, yeah, now I remember. I had to get into the cell before, so... I got the, the key from the train. But it pretty much explored every place. Really? It'd make for a lot. I forgot. Exactly now the drawers slid out, but there's not a single penny. I'm not sure what Radkar wants or needs. Mm, better. I don't think I need anything down there. Yeah, so this area is toast. Cleaned up. I think I'm gonna need to go talk to Sushi again. I mean, even all of this is done, I don't think we have anything else from there. Maybe she will give me some insight on what we did with Rakhar. I'm a hacker. Well, it's a matter of challenges, you know? I've never done anything to hurt anybody. No viruses or anything like that. But when you get the challenge of breaking into a supposedly invincible system, it's just irresistible. You have to demonstrate that you can do it. But the people who created the infallible system might be good, but that you are even better. Anyway, Sushi, we'll talk later. All right, see you later. Yes, I have no memory of this place, honestly, this set of puzzles. Huh. Let me check on that set again. I mean, I can give him a thumb yeah. up. Hey, Rutger. Hey, what's up? I believe I have something you might be interested in. Let me see, man. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a fine Hopi axe pipe. Very nice, man. I'm glad you like it. Do we have a deal, then? The pipe, in exchange for preparing what we talked about. Oh, yeah. It's a deal. That was easier than I thought. This is sweet as honey. Take a puff. No thanks. I don't smoke. Listen, didn't you want some herbal pleasure to lighten you up a bit? Yeah, but... Well, this is the thing. Smoke. Okay. Oof. I'm not it's used to this, so, uh, one crack will do. Whoa. I feel dizzy already. I better get out of here fast. I believe I'm ready to act as a medium. He went there fast. No. Be better, but no. <laughs> Needs to say your dispositions are low and consciousness enough to go into a trance has improved. Uh, you still don't seem adequately prepared. Uh, what the heck do I need? About the medium. Please. You have found someone? Ask for the person with close emotional ties to the spirit. There's no problem. That person is Gina. Very well then. That problem is solved. All we have to take care of is the topic of the medium. Where can I- I use chip. What about- him? Okay. I use- mm. 
I'd like to Well, let's see if Gina has something to say to all of this. Hi, Gina. Brian. Have you found a new- Not yet. I think I'm on the verge of- yeah. He's coming here. I'm out. Okay. I hate having this. You can see him. Be careful. Bye-bye. Oh, okay. The other ones, uh, let's go talk to one person, we'll talk to the other person. We don't need any of that. Let's go back to that also. Go back to that crash, get that into something stronger. Hey, Rucker. Hey, what's up? Hey, that music you were playing sounded really neat. You thought it was cool? Playing the bongos totally mellows me out. It's my hobby, you know. Mm. That stuff you put in the pipe didn't work. I need something a bit stronger. More powerful, huh? Hmm. I think I know what you need. I was just recently studying some old Indian shaman recipes. There is one that the Hopi tribe medicine men used to use. Have you heard of them Hopi Indians? Yeah, I've heard something about it. Apparently, these Hopi medicine men used to make a brew that was mighty strong. They said they used it to help their spirit leave their body and be able to get closer to Kichi Manitou, the Great Spirit. That is just what I need. Can you make it for me? I'm afraid not. I have all the ingredients except one. The most essential of all, the Yawaskel. Yawaskel? Yeah. You get it from inside these pods that grow on a plant which grows in this area. The problem is, I haven't been able to find that plant anywhere, even though I've searched throughout the region for weeks. Seems this crazy plant only grows on sacred Hopi land. Huh. And do you know what the Yawaskel looks like? From the drawings I've seen, they're bumpy bowls of a dark red color. I've studied the topic quite a bit, and though I've never seen any of those bowls myself, I'm sure I could identify one if I saw it. Hmm. Very interesting, Rucker. I've got to go now. Let's keep talking about this later. Sure thing, man. Balls, right? A lot of balls. Hmm. I still have yeah, the branch that's... I tore off the outside of the sacred crypt. And now that I've taken a closer look, there's some pods on this thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what luck! I bet that plant I took the branch off of is precisely the one Rucker was talking about. I'll pull the pods off the branch. Done. Now I should open them and see if they contain those famous little red balls. Maybe not. The pods are really hard. There's no way I can open them with my hands. I need something else to tear them open. Those darn little Yawaska balls Rucker needs are... I don't get it. That doesn't... Let's check in the shed. I don't see anything... I won't get anywhere. Well, we don't have anything sharp. Maybe something from the pool shed. There's an empty space. I can't think of any. No. Did you? <laughs> no. I remember when I played this the first time. Once I got through that uh, stuck moment that I had, I just blasted the rest of the game. Hey, like my brain was on overload to solve what? everything. I see you're working on a stone sculpture right now. Yes, I can't tell you exactly what it is that I'm sculpting, but. I've been struck with great inspiration. We'll discuss. Ciao. Yeah, alien inspiration. Where could I have something useful? That doesn't. We'll get it. Hey, Rick. Hey, what? No, I'll just see it. See. Ah. 
Maybe missing something from my pixel or something. Or it's... Now there's mud flung all around! No. Flower claw. Maybe if I can find a skull Okay. This yep. scalpel may be just what I was looking That's for. It. Yeah. Using the scalpel, I can open the pods up and get the little Yawaska balls out. Brain is ticking. These pods are as hard as a rock. It looks pretty dull, so the pods may be too hard for it to touch. Or not. Okay. Let's go. Do I have a let's go? Well, the only one who works with tools is the bits the monkeys. That doesn't seem like you won't get in. I don't Hmm, I don't know. I don't think Well that is one idea I have. And it's kinda stupid but Never think any of your ideas are stupid in this game, because trust no. me, the logic is absolutely insane. It's not, it's not this. I'm gonna go to the saloon, uh, the hotel, and I'm gonna fire it up. Hmm, I don't really... Heat up the blade, maybe. Yes! Good idea! If See? I heat up the scalpel, it'll definitely cut better. That's something you don't really leave think it in of. There for a few seconds to make it nice and hot. All right, that should do the trick. Ow! I gotta be careful. It's burning hot. Yep. That's All right, so this time the pods will yield to my strength. And your fire, probably. Finally, now I've got those silly Yawaska balls, and just in time, the scalpel cooled down and is now at room temperature. Good thing I cut through the pods when I did. As you about nope, that's not what I wanted to click. Let's go. Click, 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 go, 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 click, 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 click. Go, 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 go. Whoa, Rucker's gonna flip when he sees this. You better get you a better smoking hey, gun. Hey, Rucker. Hey, what's up? You'll never believe it. What? I've got some Yawaska balls. No way, brother. Don't believe me? Seeing is believing. Man. You're right, it's prime Yawaska. Told you so. Can you make that hopey brew you told me about now? Of course, I'll get right to it. Perfect, I'll let you work then. Well, a long time seems to have gone by. I think that Rucker must have that brew ready. Rucker! Yeah, I'm over here, man. Is it finished? I have the finished product, and I'm telling you right now, this is some great day stuff. Those Hopis sure knew what they were doing. If this doesn't put you into orbit, I don't know what will, my friend. Okay, does this taste bad? Bad? No way, these guys even made their herbal infusions taste delicious. Drink with no fear, man. Tastes like strawberries. Whatever. Yeah, I can feel it already. It's as if uh, I were levitating. Uh, I'm leaving before the effects get any stronger. Okay, sir, but I'm drinking the leftovers. Now I know I'm prepared enough to become a medium. You don't give up, do you? Very well, let me look into your eyes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> he's, he's out. He's out. <laughs> he's probably out. Your eyes have revealed it. Good. Your mind is ready. Now we must prepare your soul. Prepare my soul? See, it in these veins of us, in case something goes wrong. What do you mean by that? 
I didn't think this was dangerous. And it is not, provided a medium is truly prepared. Believe me, preparing yourself properly will keep you from fear. Okay already, fine. What do I have to do? Kneel before the altar. Here? Yes, on your Kneel knees. before the chicken. Pray to the chicken. Here after me. Okay. Son Luciano, I pray that you care for my soul while it is absent from my body. San Luciano, I pray that you care for my soul while it is absent from my body. Santa Brigida, protect me with your cloak and do not allow the devil to take over my body. He's looking funny. Santa Brigida, protect me with your cloak and do not allow the devil to take over my body. As soon as my soul is clean and ready to travel to your side if you wish it to be so. Jesus, my soul is clean and ready to travel to your side if you wish it to be so. Enough. Please rise. Okay, should I bring in Gina so we can get this over with? Not so fast. We won't be doing it here. We are going to the well of souls. Where? Do not worry, it's a proper place. Did you see the well to my right? That is the place. Go. Cool. Well, of souls, it's just do my basement. Do you really have to go in there? Yes, you do. Think no longer and go in. Vamonos! You will see a seat inside of our pentagram. Sit in it and prepare your mind. Also, when you have Gina and me down. Alright, whatever you say. I have no idea how Oscar can fit in that, let alone everybody else. And I'm not gonna question. Let's begin. Now, Brian, it is important for you to stay relaxed. Was it really necessary to tie me to the chair? You believe me. It was for your own safety, I assure you. Now, stare into my eyes, Portugal. All the tension is flowing out of your body. You are relaxing, more and more relaxing. You feel good, smooth, yes. I am going to come to you. And when I think, you will fall into a deep slumber. One, two, three. I don't think this is working. Three. Is being crazy. We are oh. here to convey the being from the other side. We have the will and the medium. We have the will and the medium. The medium awaits in the center of the pentagram. Someone from this plane wishes to speak with our being. We invoke that being with all due respect. We are the will and the medium. Gina, it's your turn. Speak with that being. Tell him you want to talk with him. Johnny. Johnny, the Indian, it's me, Gina. I need to talk with you. You were about to tell me something when we were interrupted. Now we have a chance to finish our conversation. Johnny, it's me, Gina. Please talk to me. Johnny? Yes, I remember. You were talking to the pink iguana when those thugs showed up, but I don't remember anything more. Where have I been? It's dark here, and I'm freezing. Johnny, look, you're in here locked up. The Sandretti's locked you into the basement, under the storeroom, and the pink iguana. Damn them. Gina, you've got to help me. Get me out of here, and I'll take you with me. We'll be rich, kiddo, and we'll live like kings. You kept the money from the truck heist? Of course I did. I pulled one over on those bad things. I'll share the cash with you, baby. Just get me out of here fast. Now's not a good time. There's guards all over the place. I'll come get you out, Luke. But tell me, where did you hide the money? The Sandretti's haven't been able to find a clue. <laughs> of course they haven't found it. You think I'm an idiot? Those evil doers would never find the money. <laughs> you are so sly, Johnny. Where's it hidden? Yeah, kiddo. Too smart to trust me, too. I'm not telling you one more word. Get me out of here, and I'll give you a piece of the pie. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. I'll come back in a while and help you escape. I'll be waiting. Make it quick. Johnny? Johnny? You handsome target. And I must say, I don't like what I saw one bit. 
You are going to be a kid. And that can be very dangerous. I hope you don't regret it later on. Now let us set that topic aside. Life is exhausting and needs to rest. I'll untie Brian and take him to my room. Lay him on your bed and let him sleep as long as he needs. put you in bed. You've been asleep for nearly 24 hours. The effort of being a medium left you exhausted. Do you remember anything that happened in the Well of Souls? Enough! Everything seemed like a dream. It was like I was floating above your head. But I perfectly remember that you didn't invoke your father. No, it was Johnny. Johnny the Indian. That's it. Well, don't you think you owe me an explanation? Yes, I guess so. Well, here goes. Remember everything I told you about my father's death in the hospital? Yeah, of course I remember. Well, it wasn't exactly true. You mean, your father didn't? No, he's perfectly fine. And he doesn't work for the government, like I said. He breeds sheep in Marion Bridge, Utah. So, you invented all of that? Not exactly. <laughs> Let me explain. I really did work at the Pink Iguana, but I wasn't really a singer. I performed in my mother's happy chair. That night, when my act was over, I talked to Johnny the Indian, a pretty shady fellow who had just gotten out on parole. Johnny had had a few too many. He told me he was going to start a new life and that I should go with him. He showed me the crucifix he wore around his neck the whole four years he'd been in prison and said it was the key that would open the door to that new life. He was drunk, and I didn't take him very seriously. I thought the guy was embracing Christianity or something like that. And then, the Sandretti brothers showed up. Johnny asked me to keep the crucifix for him and to disappear before they saw me. Everything I told you about my father's death in the storeroom of the pink iguana was true. But it wasn't my father they killed. It was Johnny. They interrogated him and beat him to a pulp. I'd heard of the Sandretti brothers and how dangerous they are. But that night, I saw it with my own eyes. When my father killed Johnny, I couldn't help but scream. So they found me out and I ran as fast as I could down the alley. This is such a good reveal. This is such a good setup and everything. This is so cool. why were they interrogating him? What did he do? Well, Johnny had just spent four years in the slammer for holding up a truck. The whole heist was set up by the Sangretti. Johnny was part of the group that did the job. In the beginning, the theft was a success. A fast robbery with no deaths or injuries. The money was supposed to be handed over to the Sandrettis in a garage a few hours later. But someone set a trap. The garage was full of cops, and the thieves were arrested. Luckily for them, the Sandrettis didn't show up personally, so no one could prove they were involved. However, they didn't catch all the thieves. For some reason, Johnny managed to get away, and they didn't find him until two days later near the Mexican border. More importantly, the money from the robbery never appeared. What do you mean? It wasn't in the garage, and Johnny didn't have it when they arrested him. He swore he escaped from the garage without taking a cent. Despite all their investigations, the police never found the cash. From what I heard the night they killed Johnny, the Sandretti suspected he'd kept the money, and that he was the one who informed the cops and set up the raid on the garage. They thought he'd hidden the dough somewhere during the two days he was hiding out, and that he had let himself get caught so the Sandrettis wouldn't suspect anything. You think someone with that much money would allow himself to be caught knowing he'd be put away for years? Yeah, if he didn't have any other choice. He knew that if he ran off with the money, the Sandrettis would find out and hunt him down long before the police did. He must have thought 20 million bucks were well worth four years in prison. 20 million? 20 million! No doubt Johnny thought that by the time he was released, the Sandrettis would have forgotten the whole story and that he could enjoy a great retirement. But things didn't work out that way. The Sandrettis don't forget 20 million bucks just because. And they were looking for him the day he got out of jail. So, when the Sandrettis interrogated him, did they get the truth out of him? No, that animal Gustav killed him too fast. And Johnny never acknowledged having kept the money. So we don't know if Johnny really even had it. Oh, yes, we do. He told me so through your mouth during the seance. The bad thing is, I couldn't get him to tell me where he hid the money. So, all you were really interested in the whole time was getting that money, huh? No, well, at least not at first. 
was just trying to save my life. I had been an eyewitness to a murder. I knew that they would snuff me out to keep me from talking. After that, I admit I thought if we found the money, I could start a new life far from the San Reddy. <laughs> Is that so Depends on how you look at it. What I don't understand is why they didn't knock us off in Chicago when they had us trapped in the museum. Someone at the Pink Iguana probably told them Johnny had talked to me before they killed him. They must have thought I knew something about the money, and they wanted to get it out of me. Lucky you were so great and got us out of that awful cabin. Oh, don't suck up to me now. You've been fooling me all this time. I'm such an idiot. I walked right into your trap. Please, Brian, you've got to forgive me. I swear I never wanted to lie to you, but I was scared to death. And I was afraid you wouldn't help me if I told you the truth. Well, you're wrong there. I'm so stupid I'd have helped you anyway. But this is the end of it. I'm leaving straight for California, and you? No, please. You know they'll kill me. Sooner or later they'll find me and do me in. My only chance is to find the money and use it to start a new life. You know that. Please don't leave me alone now. Help me. Okay. I'll help you find that cursed money. And then, I never want to see you again as long as I live. Don't do that. I really care about you. Oh, please. Don't play me for a sucker again. I already said I'd help you. Save the sorry act for the theater. Don't believe me if you don't want to. But I'm being sincere. Besides, if you find the money, half will be yours. I don't want a dime of that money. Do whatever you want. Well... We know Johnny safeguarded the money somewhere nearby. And no matter how strange it seems, the finger in the bottle must have something to do with it. But where should we start to look? Look, while you were asleep, I remembered something Johnny told me years ago, before the robbery. What? He said that he used to take time off between jobs to spend a few days in his homeland in Arizona, in an old trailer where he used to live before going to New York. That trailer can't be very far from him. And if we find it, maybe there'll be some clues about the money inside. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Well, I'll start with that and try to find that trailer. I'm going with you. My leg is much better. No way. You haven't recovered yet, and I don't want to have to carry you. Are you going to be mad at me for the rest of your life? No, because I plan on removing you from it soon. Fine. Just go alone if my company annoys you. I'm leaving, but don't worry. I'll be back. Goodbye. Brian is a bit of an ass, kind of, when he can, when he wants to be. Oscar, Can you talk to anybody? What? Do you recall seeing a trailer around here? An Indian named Johnny used to live in it a couple of years ago. Hmm. No, I don't remember seeing any trailer. Oh. Okay. I don't think Mama Dorito has any of the clues to that as well, so... I know who to ask. I think the first thing I'll do is go see Sushi. I've got to speak yes. with someone I can trust about all of this. More talkie-talkie and Mommy is just sitting quietly. <laughs> Hi, Sushi. Brian, how's it going? Did you find anything out? Actually, I did, but I'm not sure whether I'm too happy about it. Why that? What happened? Everything Gina told me to wrap me up in this mess has turned out to be a pack of lies. Seriously? Tell all. Look, you remember about Gina's father? Yeah, the poor girl saw them murder him in cold blood right before her very eyes. Well, forget about the murder. The old guy is living peacefully, breeding sheep in Marion Bridge, Utah. What? And that's when Gina told me the truth. She can't return to New York because she wouldn't last two days. She plans to have me help her find the money that Johnny stole so she can start a new life. I don't know what to do. I'm not interested in the money. But I don't want to leave Gina high and dry either. Besides, my life isn't worth much more than Gina's at this point. Well, the way I look at it, that money has no owner at this point. It'd be better for Gina to keep it and start that new life than to have it end up in the hands of those awful Sandretti mob guys. As for the bank the money was stolen from, I'm sure it got an insurance payoff years ago, so nobody will lose out. I don't know. Ever since I left New York, I feel like I've lost control of my life. 
I'm like a puppet for someone else pulling my strings. They decide what I can and can't do. Sort of like in those computer games. You know what I mean? Computer <laughs> adventures? Yeah, I love them! Yeah. Cheer up, Brian. You know you can count on me for help. Thanks, Sushi. You're wonderful. Anyway, I gotta try and find Johnny's old trailer. We know it's around here somewhere. And I'm sure I'll find clues in it leading me to the money. An old trailer? I don't remember seeing one, but the truth is that I don't leave Douglasville except to go into the city for provisions. Maybe Rutz or Earth Island knows something. Yeah, I'll go talk to them. See you around, Sushi. Okay, see you soon. Can I give her the finger so she can do like an you know, fingerprint scanning? Let's see if our other guy is good and if Rutter is baked out of his mind. I don't know, we're not out of the action boots yet. Rucker travels a lot around here. Hey, Rucker. Hey, how was that yummy cocktail I made for you? Great, it worked fine. But I assure you, I don't plan on trying it again. Well, whatever. Whatever. Hey, do you remember seeing a trailer around somewhere during your plant gathering expedition? A trailer? No, I don't remember seeing any trailer, man. Trailer ban. I'll just go on my way. See ya. See. Ya. He just knows how he's been chucking away at the alien. Hey Saturn. What? I see you're working on a stone. Yes, I can't tell you exactly what it is that I'm sculpt. Hey, when you found out looking for raw materials. Did you happen to see a trailer? Hmm, I think I recall seeing an old trailer one time. Yes, but it didn't seem like anyone lived in it. It looked abandoned. And where was that, Saturn? Don't you remember? It's really important. Well, let me think. That must have been seven or eight months ago. And at that time, I was involved in a project for which I needed a large quantity of clay. So I was in search of argillaceous zone. By the way, have I mentioned a simply amazing work the construction of an exact replica of the city of Florence in the second half of the 14th century. Splendor of Florence. It's one of my greatest works. You see, I was trying to capture the spirit that... Listen, Saturn, that's interesting and all, but I'm in kind of a hurry. I'll drop by later so you can fill me in on your great work, but please just tell me where you saw that trailer for now. All right, I shall. It was on the other side of Painted Canyon Gulch to the south of Douglasville, about one hour away from here. Okay, I hope I can find it. You should really reflect on your life, Phoebe. You always seem to be searching for something you don't have. <laughs> and Chet is the point of the game. We'll later, Saturn. See you soon. Ciao. Thank you for being helpful. I'm still confused about this talk to Chet. I don't know if I need to cut it up or not. Okay, let's see if I'm able to find that trailer. Ha! Huh. There's the trailer! No doubt about it, that's gotta be the one! Okay, let's see what I find around here. Trash, 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 trash. Trash, 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 trash. Wow, this is a pretty big trailer. What a wreck! I don't think the engine will even start up. We need a flag, okay. Don't see anything interesting on the outside. I'll have to go in and take a look. It's closed. Possible. It's locked up tight. Let's go then. It's pretty old. But I think it should still be able to hold up the weight of a car. Why? So nobody can get to this side? I don't really see why, and besides, I don't think I can move those big boards without help. 
What a wreck. Doors locked shut. I could try to sneak in through a window, but they're full of broken glass and it might be dangerous. There's got to be a trap door in the floor of the trailer. But sliding underneath that jalopy in these conditions would be crazy. Sure. By using it as a lever, I might get that door open. Whoa. It worked. I'm in. Let's see what I find inside. Just popped open. Ugh, what a stench! The place is a mess! I'd better move fast and get out of here as soon as possible. Big trailer. It's just filled with old clothes. I won't find any clues in there. Just old clothes and some blankets. It's as big of a mess as the rest of this disgusting trailer. I wouldn't sleep in that bed for anything in the world. 20 million bucks. Don't see anything tasty. Just some leftovers and a couple of empty bottles. No, that's okay. What for? The piece of cheese on the third shelf? I think it's already too late to save it. How weird. This looks like a nun's habit. No, why would I want to take that? Plus, I'm very respectful about that sort of thing. Take the nun's no. habit. Plus, take the nun's habit. There is nothing else I can interact with. I think the refrigerator is done. No, that's what. There is nothing in the room. Can't open the trap door. There's nothing over here. What a I don't see it. Am I missing something? No, but Is that a good talk to Gina? But if you have nothing I can expect inspect anything you say. I shouldn't be shouldn't have done those. Ah, <sighs> Oscar. Somebody built the move. What? I need. All right. See if she has some input, but I don't think she will have any. Hello, Mama Dorina. Welcome to my little hacienda, Brian. What can Mama Dorita do for you? I'd like. Go Let's go see Gina. Maybe she will give me an idea. Wait. Gina got all excited when I told her I found Johnny's trailer. She's certain that we're really close to the money. Cool. That's. I'd better ask. That's so well and nice, but I need you to give me an idea. I'd like to do it. Well. Uh, uh, is there something I can actually use? Nope. Gina got all she's Okay, back to metal sword, I guess. Okay, sushi uh, I, it seems like I'm missing something, but I shouldn't be missing anything. Sushi, I'm sorry for disturbing you. What is she looking at? What is she looking at? No problem! But, um, Johnny's twerk. How cool! And did you find any clues leading to the money? I'm nope. Fine. Okay, keep me updated. 
Anyway. All right. Okay, so basically nothing. Let me just chat with these guys quickly while I'm still here. And then I'll go back hey, to the channel and try what? to figure out. I'll just nope, see you. Doesn't see anything. I think Saturn is gonna give me hey, anything. Sat well. What? Well, the nope. job. Kidoki, back to Johnny's. Because I apparently missed something. I think it's again pixel hunting. Ah, bakashit. I don't see anything connectable here or anywhere else outside. Can't do anything with any of these. Not the flag, not the flagpole, nothing. It's definitely inside, and it definitely it's this, but it. I wonder why John. Anything special. That doesn't. That won't work. Hmm. I don't really. I don't. There's not a lot of interactables here. So, to shoot him. I don't like. I don't. I don't like. I don't. The sun's pretty low. It's almost dusk. Oh, hi, legit. Hi there. And hi, Heinz <laughs> Ketchup. And thank you, Alice, for raiding me at Party of Four. Sun's thank you. I'm. Still trying to figure out what to do here. Uh, I, we are close to the end of the game. We just need to figure out what I missed. What do I need to do? That doesn't. I don't like. You won't get. It's a weird combination of combining stuff. I can't believe how hard those were. It's a pain in the neck to get them open. Thank you for bringing friends. And don't see anything. I'm just... I'm probably missing something. This is just... This is the problem about this game. You need to pixel hunt. Like very, very much. And I know... There just must be something because I haven't got an idea. I won't find any... Uh, I love this game. Oh! Wait, you don't, don't see any... No. Look, I love this game, but pixel hunting isn't a nightmare. It's a real nightmare. I think I need to combine anything with anything. Good thing I also got. Look at it. Is there something? It's dead. Trunk. What did I miss? What did I miss? We just we just finished the stream, so I thought we were doing um, buggy since you can come here anyways. Start looking at everything. See, yeah, I had a nightmare about my internet cutting out midstream. Oh, wait. Your internet cut out midstream? Ah, uh, sucks. I'm trying to figure out what did I miss. Oh, the train! God damn I knew this was. Ah, uh, pixel fucking cunty. I knew, I knew there was something to do with it. through these papers. This looks interesting. It's an advertisement for a bank. That may be where the money is. Fucking yes. I wasted time just because I it didn't. Johnny see. put the money in that bank. 
I have to find out if he really did. Okay. Well, let us see. I think that's the only thing we can do here. Uh, the only one who can confirm that is Sushi, I'm guessing. She can hack into the bank and see if it's really there. Sushi! Hey, Brian, anything new? Yeah, I found a brochure for a maximum security bank in the trailer. I'd appreciate it a lot if you could investigate it on the internet and find out about the bank. Sure, that's a sin. I'm going to finish a little job I'm wrapped up in, and then I'll get right to it. Leave the brochure on the desk, please. Okay. Thanks, Sushi. No problem. I'll report back later. Okay, that's it with that. I think we can go to Gina, maybe confirm what we found. Or just trigger the next section. Oh, let's go to Gina. Yeah, I got Oscar. stuck f again for the stupid thing and I got unstuck. What? Yeah, this says I did. Yeah, I was able to get it, but uh, yeah, I understand when the internet cuts out and midstream and all that. Uh, no, where is Gina? Like I have some technical issues with Gina. this game, with you this episode as well, like a lot of issues. A lot. And I barely made it able to work. Gina's getting better and better. I don't think it'll take her long to walk normally again. Okay, so she told me nothing. Let's go back to sushi. Brian, come on up, fast! Yep. I've got some really juicy news. I'm coming. Come on, Brian, walk faster. So, what did you find out? First of all, I investigated what type of bank the brochure you found is for. It's not any conventional bank. The customers plant safety deposit boxes to keep their stuff in. Money, jewelry, antiques, whatever. They don't have to give any explanation at all of what's deposited inside. And I assure you, the place is a veritable fortress. I need not say that there has never been a robbery or even an attempted robbery. Then, you think Johnny put the money there? Well, it's a possibility. This type of bank charges its customers a fortune, and in turn, they pay astronomical taxes to the government in exchange for certain immunity. I mean, the police have no access to list of customers or the items on deposit. That undoubtedly makes it a pretty safe place to stash money. Using my amazing skill, I broke into the bank's database, but I didn't see the name Johnny anywhere on the list of customers. That doesn't surprise me. If Johnny wanted to hide the money there, I'm sure he was more concerned about throwing the Sandretti's off than the police. But what really gave me a big clue was the security system used at the Mojave Bank. When customers rent a safety deposit box, they receive no key or magnetic card whatsoever. Nothing. What they do is perform a fingerprint analysis. And when customers want to access the box, they just place their index finger on a scanner for the computer to identify their fingerprint. And then they're let in. You catch my drift? Yeah, you're thinking of the bottle of formaldehyde I found in the sacred crypt. There you go. Then I researched the police database, and I entered Johnny's full name, John Kawangyama. I verified that he showed up dead in a New York alley two days ago. I kept following the lead of his last name, which obviously isn't very common, and I found an interesting bit of info. Four years back, a woman's corpse floated up in the Green Kilo River when they checked her identity. She turned out to be Sister Juana Buena Dicha of the Santa Clara Mission in California. She'd been strangled and thrown into the river. A nun? No way! How was she connected to all this? Juana Buena Dicha is the name she took when she entered the order. That woman was an Indian, though, and her real name was Mary Tawangyama. Was she related to Johnny? It was his twin sister. Guess what was missing from that body when they found it? I bet it was her right index finger. Bingo! And whose name do you think the safety deposit box at the Mojave Bank was rented to for 10 years? Sister Juana Benedicia? Exactly! It all fits together now. Johnny made his sister rent the safety deposit box at the Mojave Bank and put all the money there. 
I don't think he planned on killing her in the beginning, but by the end, he was afraid she would betray him while he was in prison. That scoundrel preferred not to risk it, so he strangled his own sister, cut her finger off, and tossed the body into the river. I guess he thought it wouldn't be hard to disguise himself as a nun and use his sister's finger to take out the money when the time came. Hiding the finger in the sacred Hopi crypt seems a bit unlikely, but I think he was running out of time by then, and he needed a safe place to keep the finger for all of the years he was going to be locked up in jail. He knew about the crypt, and it seemed like a good solution. I suppose that what he never counted on was that the Sandretis would get suspicious and go after him the minute he was released from prison. Good work, Sushi. I'm amazed. Thanks. Well, I don't think there's anything to stop you from taking the money using the plan Johnny already cooked up. Just to be on the safe side, it would be better for Gina to dress up as Juana Buena Vista. She can put on a nun outfit and use the finger. I don't think she'll have any trouble taking out the cat. These banks are famous for not asking lots of questions. Sushi, it's only fair for you to get some of the money. You've definitely earned your share. I don't really need it. No, Brian. You know, I don't like to talk about this, but... I've actually got a lot of my own money already. I inherited a truckload and won't be able to spend it all if I live a thousand years. I'm not interested in money, probably because I've never needed it. That's just me. Don't think twice, Brian. Have Gina get the money and start a new life. You just have to get a nun costume, and that shouldn't be a pro- Wait, now I remember. When I was in Johnny's trailer, I saw a nun's habit on a hanger. How evil. I'm sure it was his sister's habit. Well, all the better. Go get that habit and you're ready. But don't leave without saying goodbye. Of course not, Sushi. Before picking up Gina to leave, I'll come by and say farewell. See ya. See ya, Brian. Oh, and we're back at finishing this up. Yeah. Now this is them. That's going to make family reunions awkward. Well, not bloody likely because pretty much everybody's dead. So, even jo Johnny as we've seen in the video well in the game before so yep oh wait no this is not where i need to go i need to go grab the uh, habit and then we can go and finish but this is pretty much the end of the game almost and yeah at least you're not the only one who struggled i struggled uh, fixing this game for about an hour like trying to make it run again because i forgot i this didn't stream this in a long time even though i said i would but then kind of felt through and all that Okay, so let's grab the habit. Okay, but it gives me the creeps to take it. Even that poor woman killed by her own scoundrel of a brother. I think we're in luck. The habit is just Gina's side. Oh. Interesting. Okay, all set. Now for the money. Hey, I hear the sound of an engine in the distance. I think a car is approaching. It might be dangerous. Better hide just in case. Run and hide, run and hide. Oh, well, Alice, if you no, haven't been keeping up with, now, with the game, you've got spoiled for the major Found reveal. He's the trailer, just like Bob said. Yeah, but I don't think Johnny the Indian was dumb enough to hide the cash. I don't either, but we better check. Did you see that? Fresh footprints by the door. Do you think they belong to that idiot and that bimbo? They only belong to one person. And by the size of them, they must be his. Something tells me they're close by. They probably split up to try and find where Johnny stashed the dough. I bet they'll come back here. Either together or alone. What if they have the money? Nah, I don't think so. Plus, finding them in this area won't be that easy. This is a huge desert. Let's do a full search of this trailer and wait for a while to see if they show up. But if they don't, then we'll go out and look for them. And mark my words, we'll find them, whatever it takes. And when we do, they'll wish they'd never been born. Come on! I mean, just going off screen to be hidden is the staple of any TV and uh, <laughs> game show and everything. Just off screen. And I'm in this. Rotten killers! Got to do something before those two find us. Like blowing them up? Let's warn Sushi. She can take care of it, maybe. Hello, Sushi. 
I'm going to sushi for a lot. You have the nun's habit yet? I have it. But now we've got new problems. Right when I was leaving the trailer, Gustav and Theodore showed up. They're the Sombretti henchmen. They almost saw me. Wow! So they're hot on your trail then? No, I'm afraid not. I guess they knew about Johnny's trailer and must have imagined that we would be looking for it too. From what I could hear them say, they plan on waiting in the trailer to see if we show up. Well, that gives you some time to escape. You've got the habit. Now go get the money and drive away fast. I don't know. Now I realize that Gina and I will never be safe. No matter where we go, they'll end up finding us. Hmm. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I think you're right. So, what can you guys do? I don't know yet. The best thing would be to think of a way to get rid of them all forever. You're a smart woman, Sushi. Can't you come up with something? Well, just like that? No. I'll ponder the topic. Maybe between the two of us, we can devise a solution. But there's one thing that concerns me even more. What if those killers decide to leave the trailer and reconnoiter the area? No doubt, they'd quickly find Douglas there. And from what you told me, they won't hesitate to increase the body count and that'll help them find you. We're all in danger. Yeah, you're right. We should do something about that. As soon as possible. I'll try to think of something. Then I'll tell you about it. Me too. See you soon. Well, I've got no idea how to solve this, but we'll, we'll figure it out. And yeah, the screensaver ran away and all that, that's a cute, cute easter egg. It says prefer the aquarium and the pipe stove. I don't know. Let's see what Radkar and the other boys have to say about this. Hey, Radkar. Hey, what's up? Uh, I don't know nothing. Maybe I need to talk to Gina and... Hmm. I know somebody who could actually hey, help. What? Well, the sky yeah, no. A big and brawny guy that has a shady past. Oscar, it is. Let's see if we can Oscar. help. Oscar! What? I'd like to do it well. Let's go to Gina. See what she has to say. Nope, nothing. Gina tried on the habit, and it fits like a glove. As for the thing about Gustav and Theodore, I preferred not to tell her anything. If she'd found out really? those killers are roaming around here, there's no way I would have gotten her to stay in the house recuperating. It's too bad Douglasville doesn't have a man of the law to take care of those awful goons. Yeah, at least go sneak off. Uh, good luck at work. Oscar! Maybe Mama Dorita can what? I need to oh. Maybe she can tell me what Oscar did. Forgot I know they fight them all fight them all, but I forgot how Hello. Welcome to my e what can I don't know I can't that is what I did here. Here I am. Well No, not this. Us. What? What? Well, I don't. All I can tell. Luckily, now my. Oh. Okay. Huh. No crater, no mine, no there. Should I get something from the motor maybe? I'd rather not. Oh yeah, sure. Yes, I'll the be down. Steam blasted out. I don't know if I could have gotten this earlier. Huh. It's a sheriff's bag. It must have flown out the smokestack like the cell key did. Yeah, I can use that. It's not too worn out considering the circumstances. Okie dokie. Maybe give this. Oscar? What's up, Byron? Your life has a new mission. <laughs> I've spoken to Mama Dorita about this, and she fully agrees. Well, what is it? Oscar, you've been named the new sheriff of Douglasville. Oh. Well. 
please raise your right hand so I can swear you in. Repeat after me. I promise to defend, with my life if necessary, the laws set down in the Constitution of this nation. I promise to defend, with my wife if necessary, the laws down in that Constitution of this here nation. And I swear I will do everything necessary to ensure that these laws are not violated and to pursue anyone who might attempt to break them. And I swear I'll do things necessary to ensure them laws aren't violated and to pursue anyone who might attempt to break them. Perfect. Oscar, I hereby officially name you Sheriff of Douglasville. Sandy. Sheriff Oscar, your first mission has already come in. Listen, you've got to go to... Hey, what about my weapon? What? My sheriff's weapon. What kind of law enforcement official can I be without a weapon? Yeah, you're right. Hmm. Of course, your sheriff's weapon. Sorry, I forgot to bring that. I'll go get it. You wait here and I'll be back faster than you can say sheriff. Yes. I know the rifle Sushi shot me with when I got to Douglasville has to be around here somewhere. I know she won't mind if I take it. She might mind. Now this is it. looking better. So you were saying? Never mind. What is my first mission as sheriff? This is literally Look, game skipping the puzzle. Of Douglasville, there's a couple of guys creating a ruckus and frightening the locals. You gotta stop them and lock them up in the Douglasville jail. But watch your step partner. These guys are armed and dangerous. Don't you worry, friend. In the penitentiary, they used to call me Terminator. I'm going after what now? them. <laughs> what now? He's gonna, he's gonna go ask the La Vista baby sure on them. Do the job, Sheriff. Okay, the best thing to do would be to head for Douglasville and wait there until Oscar's completed his mission. Sure. From this Let's window. Watch. I'll be able to see Oscar when he arrives. Here comes Gustav and Theodore's car. And Oscar is driving. So I guess everything went okay. Wow. Yes, he's pulling them out of the car. And he's tied them up hand and foot. What a tough dude. He's grabbed each of them by one arm and is dragging them into the jail. Whoa, he's so buff. I've got to tell Sushi. That you did all this without her knowing? Jesus. Sushi, good news! Really? What is it? Those cursed assassins are now locked away in the town jail. But how did you manage that? It was Oscar. I made him the town sheriff and gave him his first mission. To capture those two killers. No way. <laughs> You're unbelievable, Brian. That big guy Oscar is unbelievable. Yeah, Oscar is unbelievable. By the way, I gave him your rifle so he could carry out his mission. You don't mind, do you? No, that's okay. Plus, I won't be needing it anymore. Law and order have been brought back to town. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, this is all good, but it doesn't solve the real problem. Besides, we're not exactly the murdering types. And even if we were, all we'd achieve by eliminating Gustav and Theodore is for the Sandretis to send more killers after us. Yep, you're right. We've got to think of something to free us of the Sandretti for good. You said it. You know what? I think I'll go and congratulate Oscar and get the pleasure of seeing those two thugs behind bars. Are you coming? No, not right now. You go, and I'll keep thinking of a plan. All right, see you soon. See you soon. I don't know, it's not this puzzle exciting as uh, the first half of the game, because it kind of looks the room smoothly, except when I get stuck from not clicking in the right position. Oh, there it goes automatically. And yeah, there, there are some things that are just kind of going automatically, like him get, grabbing the gun. Oscar, and, uh, good work! You managed to catch those two bad guys. Thanks, but I was just doing my job. Those two bandits thought they could beat me with a little gun and some knives. Yeah, they were really fooling themselves. You locked them up in the cell, right? Yeah, the things they were carrying are in a jail bag on the desk in the office. Perfect, Oscar. You're a real professional. Just doing my work. By the way, Brian, from now on, would you mind calling me Sheriff? Of course not. It would be a pleasure, Sheriff. 
Oh, Oscar, you're gonna get hit with so much power. Uh, I don't know this is gonna be bad. Hi, guys. Anyway. Oh, wow, they're still tied up. Wow. You, you're the moron behind all this? Not as much of a moron as you would seem. This time you've met your match, one would say. Wouldn't you, boys? You mean that orangutan? He caught us off guard. He didn't look dangerous with that silly face. I'd watch my mouth if I were you. If Oscar hears you, I accept no responsibility for his actions. You're some smart aleck kid, but you're out of your league. Stop playing funny, boy. You're a dead man. Yeah, better than that corpse there behind you. I don't think you should be threatening anyone at this point. You should be begging. And speaking of that guy back there, take a good look. Because that's how you guys are going to end up. What a waste of time talking to two killers. Hey, I need to use the lethal boys. That's room. the bag Oscar what left me. Inside are the things Gustav and Theodore had with them. Why don't you shut your trap, you Russian okay. retard? Examining the stuff those two guys were carrying around may give us some ideas. Let's grab the canvas stuff. is pretty worn out, but I don't think it'll tear. Oh, you just picked up everything. Let me take a look. Let's grab the stuff. A gun, three loaders, a few knives, brass knuckles, a couple of wallets, and a cell phone. Run in the middle stuff. Let me take a look. Yeah. Oh. Like run in the middle. That doesn't seem. I don't like. It. I don't look at it. What do you think you're gonna do with us? I bet you ain't no, got it's no the nerve to kill us. That doesn't make. Look at it. Leave it they should poke them with the poker. Look at it. By this time, the same Freddies must be asking think... themselves why we haven't called in for two hours. It won't Look take them it. long to send someone out looking for us. Get Look ready, you worm. That doesn't. I don't like. Why the hell you them off? It's locked. You like a chick, eh? It's locked. Well, I'll have you know she's a couple of hands uh, She'll turn on you when you least expect. Well, I've got everything neat. And I think I can give this to Sushi. She might be able to figure out what she can do with cell phone and all that. Sushi! Yes, Brian? I brought you everything Gustav and Theodore had on them. Maybe you can use it to investigate on the internet or something like that. Okay, as soon as I have time, I'll take a look at it. Leave it on the table for me, please. All right. It's all inside a jail bag. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go out and then come back in again. See if that's going to help me at all. There's not much to do, if at all, anything. Sushi. No problem. Did she get? Have you taken a look at Gustav and Theodore's things? Yeah, but I bet all their papers are safe. I haven't found any information on their past on the internet. Although, there is one thing I discovered. Gustav is a total movie fan. Movie? How do you know? While looking through his wallet, I found a season ticket to the film archives of New York. Can you believe it? That animal is a cinema lover. I don't want to imagine what his favorite films are. You know, movies are what I miss most since moving here. In Boston, I used to go two or three times a week. You like movies? Oh, I do too. I'm a major movie freak. Oh, yeah? So tell me, who is your favorite director? Oh, just huge kids getting spilled by John Wood, Billy Wild and Judy Allen. I think it has to be something related to the, you know, background stuff over here. I forgot. Mm. Woody Allen. He's my favorite too. I know it's hard to pick since there are so many good ones, but which of his movies do you like best? Annie Hoff, Rachel Godwin, Happy Murder Mystery, Everyone Says I Love You, Anna and Her Sisters. Uh, this is kind of like a, a puzzle. I'm gonna go have to go through all of these. 
I think Manhattan maybe. murder mystery. I love that one. Do you remember the scene where? Hey, wait a minute. I think I've got an idea. Just solve it. I might have solved this. Wait, let me organize everything and then I'll explain. But can't you tell me about your bright idea? No, I gotta make sure that we have everything we need first. Come back in an hour, okay? Seems like it's been an hour to me. Seems like it is. Let's go back. Well? Let me explain. Remember how in Manhattan Murder Mystery they record the husband's voice in order to pretend that he makes a phone call later on? Yeah. Sure, I remember. My idea is to do something similar. We'll call the Sandretti, pretending to be one of the thugs. There's a cellular phone in Gustav and Theodore's space. I've looked through it, and there's a number memorized as Bosses, which is undoubtedly the number they call to report to the Sandretti. We use a more sophisticated system than in the movie. A voice emulation program I downloaded once from a website called The Way Secret and Fully Invincible. What would we achieve by calling the Sandretti and pretending to be the thugs? will make them suspect that Gustav and Theodore are intending to keep the cash to themselves. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. How do we do it? You have to record the thug's voices so I can enter samples into the program. It'll analyze them and create a filter which we can use on any voice to make it sound like the voice of those killers. Program is that good? Guaranteed. Meanwhile, you have Programming. to Gina saying something like, You lying murderer, you killed them and now you want to keep the money. Gina is on our side, so we can just use her voice. We don't need to emulate it. Got it? Yeah, but are you sure this is going to work? Of course I am. Don't you worry. Just do your part and leave the rest up to me. There's an MP3 recorder on the table. Go get it and record those voices, please. All right, I will. Okay, don't take too long. Yeah, it's science. Incredibly well, it's programming and all that. Everything can be solved with emulators, and everything can be played with emulators. <laughs> I told you when I said this is kind of gonna go along simply enough. I don't get it. Leave it away. Okay, let's do it. Hi guys, how's it going? What kind of game do you think you're playing, kid? A uh, point of click game, actually. And you might get out of this alive. I'm starving. Aren't you going to feed us? Man, they get better food than a chocolate. By this time, the Sandretti's must be asking themselves why we haven't called in for two hours. It won't take them long to send someone out looking for us. Get ready, you worm. Hey, I think I'm ready to re enter society. Why don't you let me out so I can integrate and start a new life? The first thing I plan to do <laughs> is to massacre your whole family. Oh, they don't want to talk to your trap, you Russian retard. Leave it to rest for what I... Come on, boys. Don't argue. Cellmates are supposed to get along. Done. Now I have the voices of those two recorded. Yeah, it's good Oscar did not. Uh, you know, untie them. Very good. Hello. Welcome to what's in. I'd like to see you. Johnny. What the fuck? Now you're gonna die. <laughs> Jesus, the sign sound work you here was awful. Yeah, it was horrible. Johnny was rising from his grave to kill me. There, there. It's all over now. Yeah, good thing you got here and saved me from Johnny. You don't look so angry with me anymore. Well, let's drop that. Listen, come up with a plan for us to keep the money and yes. get rid of the Sandretti's forever. I need to record you saying, You awful killer. You killed him and now you want to keep the money for yourself. But what for? Explain it to me. There's no time, Gina. Just trust me. Come on. Let's rehearse once before recording. Let me remind you of the sentence. You awful killer. You killed him and now you want to keep the money for yourself. You awful lying killer. 
Come you on, you can ask about now you want to keep the money for yourself. That was pretty bad, Gina. When you lied to me, you did a much better job. Come on, try again. You lying killer. You killed him, and now now you want to keep the money for yourself. Better. But it still doesn't sound real. Try it once more. You lying killer. You killed him, and now you want to keep the money for yourself. Well, it's no Oscar performance, but it'll do. Wait for me to start recording and say it again. You lying killer. You killed him, and now you want to keep the money for yourself. Okay, I'm leaving. There's no time to lose. Get ready. I'll come back for you shortly, and we'll go find the money. Aren't you going to tell me your plan? Later. I promise. Right now, I have to leave. All right. Don't take long, please. No, don't worry. See you soon. See you. Now it's all recorded. She I should take the recorder to Sushi ASAP so she can implement the plan. Okay, here we go. Here we go and go. I think this is pretty much the end. I said this if you didn't know how funny it is. All the recording is done. This is a good thing today. You can skip the, the walking sequence. Hey, Sushi. Just go to the next page. Get the recording? Yes, I have it all. Excellent. Leave the recorder on the desk and give me an hour to organize everything. Whatever you say. See you in an hour. Bye. Seems like it's been an hour to me. Seems like it to me. All set? All set. Look at this. Brian, you're a bag of pond scum. How does it sound? Wonderful, Sushi. And you said I was unbelievable. You're the amazing one. Well, it's no big deal. I ended up using Gustav's voice because he seemed like the thug leaving the show. We'll make the call using my computer. But the computer has a system that will make them think they're receiving the call from Gustav and Theodore's cell phone. I've also prepared the sample of Gina with a few touch-ups, including gunshot sound effects I added in. Ooh! Let's go. I hope it everything is. turns out okay. I'm Thing sure that I will. can't do to save my life. about time what the heck is up we nabbed him well have you got any information out of them it's what we suspected boss johnny told that floozy where the money was hidden before we did away with him i knew it so what about the cash do you have it back bad news chief the money's history what what do you mean it's history let me explain boss when we got here and found that bimbo and her little friend we decided to follow him without them seeing us you know to see if they lead us to the cash and and it worked boss we followed them to an old abandoned mine and apparently that's where johnny hid the booty after the heist we caught him by surprise exiting the mine with two huge trunks but this stupid mule theodore jumped the gun as usual and shot too soon. You useless, incompetent donkey! Theodore missed and they ran back into the mine. We chased after him and trapped him at the end of the mine shaft full of boxes. Boxes of dynamite, that is. I screamed at Theodore, don't shoot! But that dim wit of a Russian had already fired a gunload of bullets. The whole place turned into an inferno in one second. We ran out and escaped from the mine by an inch. Stupid moron. The whole mine blew to bits with the floozy and that idiot inside. And the money, unfortunately. I'm sorry, boss. The way we left that place, there was no way to get the money out. And you lying killer. You killed him. And now you want to keep the money for your... What was that? Gustav, you filthy rat. That was the girl who was screaming. Gustav! Gustav! You won't steal a cent from me. The seed has been sown. Cool. Oh, and thanks for calling me an idiot. I'm sorry, but it has to be credible. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. This came off great. It sure did. Excuse my lack of modesty, but I did a wonderful job here. 
and you don't even know about the icing on the cake yet. What icing? Listen, and try not to fall to the floor and kiss my feet. I hacked into a Swiss bank and created an account under Gustav and Theodore's names with a balance of $20 million. I printed up a receipt from the account and stuck it into Gustav's wallet. It's hidden well enough that he won't find it before the right time. Tomorrow, I'll instruct Oscar to take the killers out of the jail, blindfold them, and take them far away from here. I'll tell him to abandon them on some remote highway, but to make sure he gives them their stuff back first. Either I'm way off here, or the Sandrettis will soon find them. They wouldn't want to be in there soon when the Sandrettis find the receipt from the Swiss bank. Simply brilliant, Sushi. You never cease to amaze me. The only thing is, I'll have to lend Oscar the thug's car. I thought I'd use it myself to pick up Gina and go straight to the Mojave Bank before having a panic attack, but... Oh, take it. It doesn't matter. Oscar can just take one of my Hummers tomorrow. One of your Hummers? Yeah, I have three in the barn, so that's all worked out. Anyway, let me tell you something. I hate goodbyes. I always end up in tears. So I'd rather just stay here by my computer instead of watching you leave, okay? Thanks for everything, Sushi. I'll never forget you. Goodbye, Brian. Please come back someday. And send me some email. My address is cccouglas at hotmail.com. Hotmail. That's all. So long. Farewell. I'm old. Sushi. Best support character hacker ever. Are we just gonna have to watch him walk to the car? God damn it. Walk faster, Brian. Faster. Faster. Sir, I've got a movie. I've got an urgent mission elsewhere. I'm taking the prisoner's car, alright? Sure. The keys are in the ignition. About those two guys in there? Just follow Sushi Douglas's order. She's the mayor of Douglasville. I'll do that. See you soon, Oscar. Adios, amigo. God, these crazy ass colorful characters I just enjoyed them. So weird. And it just gets weirder as the game progresses. Oh, it's, it's the gang. Goodbye, Brian. We'll miss you. He was gay, wasn't he, man? <laughs> what? What? Uh, I'm sorry they don't show up. I think maybe Sushi should It's amazing how Sushi helped me put all the pieces together, isn't it? She's an amazing girl. I picked up Gina at Mama Dorita's house. Her leg had almost totally healed, so we headed for the Mojave Bank. We got there at dusk. That wouldn't be a problem. Sushi made sure it was the kind of bank where customers can do transactions at any time of day. We were pretty scared, but it turned out getting the money was simpler than we expected. Damn, this looks like Fort Knox, not like a fucking bank. Yeah, this is Fort Knox. Jesus. Look around the canyon in there. They just needed to fill the canyon mode with like alligators and acid and acid alligators and electric sharks and something like that. Just for good measure. Volt 13, got him. Empty. Two suitcases, just that. And 20 million dollars, I have no idea how that fits in those two suitcases. Woo! Can you believe it? There I was. Driving a car stolen from a bunch of murderers with a beautiful woman at my side and 20 million bucks in the trunk. Las Vegas was close by, so we headed that way. We ditched the car and checked into a luxury hotel. 
Throwing caution to the wind, Gina insisted we get the best room in the hotel, the honeymoon suite, obviously for newlyweds. So, we signed in under bogus names, pretending we just got hitched. Let me tell you guys, that sure made up for the bad days I've had. Gina and I, well, let's just say we had time to get more up close and personal. One morning when we went down to breakfast, we read in the newspaper that two guys' bodies had shown up, riddled with bullets in a New York alley. Their description left no room for doubt. It was definitely Gustav and Theodore. They didn't give any further information in the paper, but I can imagine what went down. Oh, really? Stop lying, you Luigi. Where's the money? I swear we don't have it, Don Roberto. That tramp's little friend is smarter than we thought. He framed us. So what about that telephone call? I never made that call, Don Roberto. You filthy mutt. Do you think I can't recognize your scratchy, betraying voice, you cellar rats? We aren't lying, Don Carlo. We would never betray you guys. Roberto, perhaps they aren't your secrets. Gustav and Theodore are our best men. They've always been loyal. I know, Carlo. I know. But unfortunately, loyalty comes at a hefty premium these days. And I guess losing it for $20 million isn't a bad deal. So, let's see if your faithful boys have an explanation for this. It was tucked away very nicely in Gustav's wallet. Hey! You really? Rags. Really, this is obvious. Hey, nobody laughed at Carlos Andretti to his face. No, Don Carlo, don't do it. That's hey. a lot of bullets. Damn it, Carlo. If they're dead, we'll never get back the money. I don't care. We got more than enough, though. The most important thing that nobody else will be enjoying our money. Eh, kind of stupid on their part, let's say. Everything turned out all right after all. And frankly, I felt no remorse for those two killers. I was just sorry the Sandretis didn't get what they deserved, too. Anyway, even though it was unlikely that the Sandretis would follow up on the matter, it was safer for Gina to take a long vacation where nobody'd recognize her. The Cayman Islands seemed like the perfect place. Gina insisted I go with her, but I... Well, look, I just couldn't. I'd worked so hard to earn my chance to study at Berkeley, I couldn't just throw it all away. Mm -hmm. Not even for goofs like that? Right. Who are you kidding, brother? And in a car like that. Are you sure you don't want to come with me? No, Gina. I worked really hard to be able to come here, and I can't just let it all go by the wayside. Whatever you want. I'm gonna miss you. Ten million bucks. You too. But it will be. It's for the best. This is where I belong. You could always take a year off, and then. That wouldn't work. Be happy, Gina. See you soon. I'd be happier with stubborn old you. Goodbye. Why do I feel like a total idiot? Because you are. What did you forget now? Well, something tells me you're dying to come with me. Am I right? Maybe, but what about you? What about me? Are you dying for me to go with you? Of course. You know that, silly. Well... Now that I think about it, Berkeley's been here for over a hundred years, so... <laughs> Jesus. I guess it can wait one year more. Get in the car, dude, and have a great time. In the next three games! Uh, three games, actually. <laughs> more adventures and bullshit and insanity awaits. You should have gone to Berkeley, actually. Yeah, I should have gone to Berkeley and gotten away from all of that.
I mean, team song performed by Liquor. aren't you? Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Brian's the kind of geek who'd rather be studying at Berkeley than a party with a hot girl. Well, I admit I almost did. But at the last minute, I heard a little voice say something I heard in a movie a long time ago. In the film, the main character reaches the conclusion that there are times in life when you have to know when to say... <laughs> what the heck? Hey, darling. Can you rub some lotion on my back? Of course, dear. I'll be right with you. Well, friends, now I must bid you farewell. As you can see, duty calls. I hope I haven't bored you too much with this little adventure story. So, uh, I'll be seeing you real soon, okay? Brian, are you coming? Yep. So, like I said, friends, see you soon. In Runaway 2, the dream of a turtle, which we will get to as soon as I can. Yeah, this is now that I'm playing it again after so, so, so many years. My memory is not that bad, but also... I know that the game is utter jank in animation, and there's some, a lot of pixel hunting and a lot of quality of life uh, point click stuff that's a little been implemented in newer games and it's become standard. But it's still one of my, you know, favorites. I'm not gonna say guilty favorites, because there's no such thing as a guilty favorite game. Uh, it's still one of my favorites because this is the game that sparked my love of uh, point-and-click adventures. The, the 
the excitement of discovering two items combining and functioning the wacky combinations the out there logics like that this is the game and the series of pendulum games like not just this a few other ones that taught me to think outside of the box like to combine stuff that you wouldn't believe is possible to combine and to solve all of the great mysteries so i'm glad you enjoyed this uh, i hope you enjoyed this as much as i did uh, it's mostly of a playthrough than a let's play because i knew puzzle solutions i just needed to figure out <laughs> where to find some of them and to remember a few things but yeah i'm hoping you all enjoyed it uh, we're gonna come back with uh, runaway 2 and 3 then we will do uh, the i think it is the next best thing and that's I think the only one the game the games when they kind of uh, went out we just made one of them. Then it's uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday origins. I think that's the only two ones left. There's a few, and uh, th was it yesterday origins that I haven't actually completed at all. So that's gonna be the only one that I will complete with you guys. But yeah, I hopefully will get into this uh, sooner or rather than later and continue all of these episodes into the future as like series and may many other point in games. I, I love them. I still play them. I still like kind of uh, get some of them as reviews so I can play through them and explore and all that. Anyway, I'm rambling uh, uh, on. Uh, Runaway, a road adventure, great series, fun stuff, uh, very difficult if you're starting point and adventures on your own for the first time, but it will teach you well enough how to solve any other, pretty much. In any case, if you want to comment, like, subscribe, do the dance, uh, then after that you can support me on Patreon, and yeah, until next time, do remember as always, it's the stories that we play. See ya.